Hello there, kia ora. Yesterday, the government was pleased as punch to announce that they had finally done local water well when they were delivering a change up for water care in Tamaki, Makoto, Auckland. Only let's be real, they would have just called it Auckland because the use of today or Māori is not something this particular government is all that keen on, and that's not even the big issue here. Now look, I'm a big fan of giving credit where it's due, so let's give the government credit where it's due. They have managed to stop rates going up 25.8% in water charges for Auckland. 25.8% rates increases that they put on to councils, because you might recall when they first got into government, one of the first things they did was tell councils that costs for water management and infrastructure was back on them, even though they'd taken everything out of the system already to make way for three waters, but the government wasn't going to do that. They were telling councils to start dealing with the problem themselves and had no plan at all for what would happen afterwards. Like they literally had no plan when they took over, they just said, here is the money. And there are some places that were being hit harder than others, like the Far North District Council. Remember they initially had a look at almost 30% increase in rates because of their very old water infrastructure that they had up there. And it would have been far cheaper for them to get into some kind of mega entity with Auckland and spread those costs out over a longer period of time and therefore end up being a lot cheaper. But that of course didn't happen. Now, to their credit, Far North District Council has managed to lower their potential rates increase to about 16 to 17% because they're putting off talking about water infrastructure until they've had more feedback from the public. That's bound to end really, really well. So yeah, credit where it's due. That rates increase of 25.8% was the National Party's doing. But don't worry, under this new plan, the rates increase is only going to be 7.2%. So yep, credit where it's due, that's lower than 258 but still a lot higher than the 2% it would have been under Labour's affordable water plan because, as I said before, they would have been all grouped in with Far North District Council. They would have been an entity that had a really high credit rating and government backing and far more assets to be able to borrow against over a longer period of time with a lower interest rate than what Watercare is going to be able to do by themselves. That would have been 2%. So yep, credit where it's due. 7.2% is definitely on the government. And this whole plan is also not actually on the government. You see, what happened was Auckland Council turned around to the government and said, this is what we want to do. And the government said, you know what, let's do it. Now, it might be because it's a really good plan. It might be that it's an alternative that actually works well for everyone. And the council voted for it. They voted unanimously for it. But there is an element here that's not being mentioned. There is a time limit on this. You see, last year, Watercare actually turned around and told Auckland Council that if they didn't have more of an idea as to what was happening with funding going into July 2024, they would not be able to borrow more money for asset management programs, which means water infrastructure falling to pieces, which means all sorts of problems for our largest population area in the country. There was a time limit on getting this done, which may be part of the reason why the government was able to push it through so quick. Also, water care is a standalone organisation. If you're looking at an area like the Waikato or Otago, where you've got a lot of little councils that are going to have to work together, this is not going to be anywhere near as easy or straightforward. So realistically, the government is due some credit for first of all increasing the potential rates by a huge amount, over a quarter, for most of the councils around the country. And they are due credit for getting it down to 7.2% when it could have been 2% if people had actually voted in other ways. They're due credit for actually agreeing to a plan that somebody else came up with, so they shouldn't really take credit for that. And they are due credit for not telling everybody how much of an urgent matter this actually was, because... Well, they can now turn around and say, look what we did in just six months, we're working for you, when in reality, they only had eight months to get everything sorted in the first place. But hey, the government wants to take credit, so let's make sure they get the credit they deserve. Oh, but when it comes to credit that they deserve, well, there's another sort of credit, isn't there? You see, it's actually going to be written into the legislation that the government will not back up water care when it comes to any kind of loans, and the council is not allowed to prop up water care if something goes wrong. So if something goes wrong and water care can't make payments on money it needs to borrow, it can be sold off to the highest bidder. That's right, it will be written into the legislation that it's entirely possible if this fails, water care is going to be sold. But this government told us they weren't going to do asset sales they're just going to set it up so that if something fails, which, you know, government is pretty good at the moment of letting that kind of thing happen, well, it'll be sold off to the highest bidder and Aucklanders will still probably get a rate increase because then a company's got to turn a profit. I'm sure this is going to end really, really well, but hey, credit where it's due, right? Right.